Hi everyone. Welcome to Sunday School at the Diocese of New Jersey. My name is Anne Delgado. This is my son Matthew and we are really excited to join you every week. Uh, whether you're watching these sessions on the Diocese of New Jersey's YouTube channel or if you're joining us for our in-person sessions each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. on Zoom and you can find that registration information on the Diocese of New Jersey's website. But however you are using these sessions, we are really glad to spend this time with you, and we hope that they are useful. So we are going to get started with our story today, and we're in an exciting season of Advent, so we will, we're really looking forward to it. All right, we're going to read a Bible story. We're going to talk about it a little bit and have some activities for you to do at home, but we always start with our opening prayer. So I will uh, say a line and uh, Matthew and the rest of you can say it along uh, after me and we'll go back and forth until the amen. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Keep us in your loving care. Keep us in your loving care. Guide us through the coming day. Guide us through the coming day. In our work and in our play. In our work and in our play. Keep us pure and sweet and true. Keep us pure and sweet and true. In everything we say and do. In everything we say and do. Amen. Amen. All right. So I know I've shared this before, but I am really excited because Advent is one of my favorite seasons. And today's session, we are in the second week of Advent already. And that is a little bit hard to believe, but this is such a great season for us because, first of all, it's the beginning of a new church year as the church follows just a little bit of a different calendar. But Advent is a season of hope and a season of anticipation. And that is kind of a big word, right? Do you know what anticipation means? Um waiting for something. That's right. Waiting for it, but also looking forward to it. So if you're anticipating something, you know it's coming right? Mm -hmm. You might not know all the details, you might not know when or where or how, but, but you know it's coming and you are just really looking forward to it. So you're anticipating it and that's how we feel in this season. And what is the event that we are anticipating? Christmas or Jesus's birth. That's right, Christmas, uh, which, which is the birth of Jesus, uh, the arrival of Jesus in our lives. And so that is a really exciting thing to be anticipating. So let's think about for a minute before we get to our story, some of the things we are, we're, we're anticipating. And I'd like to acknowledge straight out of the box that yes, I know, uh, we are all looking forward to Christmas presents. And that is a big thing for us in this season and, and certainly something to look forward to. But aside from the presents that are waiting for you on Christmas morning, what are some other things you might be anticipating? My Christmas piano song. Ooh. That's a great one. So we were talking uh, at home uh, at dinner a few days ago, and I asked uh, my sons, you know, what are some of their favorite um, holiday traditions in Advent and Christmas, things that they are really looking forward to. And one of the things that Matt said uh, was he really looks forward to learning his Christmas piano piece. So every year, um, Matthew's piano teacher, Miss Laura, has him learn a Christmas piece, and, and that's something that he's actually looking forward to. Uh, so that was really cool, uh, something different, and something, honestly, I wasn't quite expecting. Uh, so that was a really neat thing to hear. What, even aside from Christmas, what are some things you're anticipating? My birthday. Your birthday. Mm -hmm. All right. How about some things, I know something I'm actually really starting to anticipate, and that is, uh, hopefully soon, the end of this pandemic and the end of this health crisis. And I am anticipating the vaccines that can, that can hopefully keep us safe and still enable us to get together again, because I would really like to see some people I have not seen in a really long time. So that is something I'm anticipating. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I am looking forward to it with hope and with joy. All right. So think about some things that you might be anticipating, and maybe it's a big event. Maybe it's something you know is coming, right? Maybe it's something you hope is coming. Right, being able to see family and friends again, um, being able to participate in an activity that it's been a while since you've been able to do. Uh, maybe you're anticipating, um, 
the, the end of a, of a not great situation in your life, maybe, maybe a health issue or, or some sort of other insecurity and you're anticipating, you're hopeful that that is going to come to an end. All right. So there are lots of things we anticipate in our lives and Advent is a great season and we need acknowledge that anticipation. All right. So we get very excited, especially about the arrival of Jesus in our lives. That's something that we as Christians uh, get get to anticipate and get really excited about. All right. So today's story that we're going to read is, is we're getting into um, the familiar stories of the birth of Jesus and, and the, the events that, that um, lead up to that. And so it's going to be a familiar story for many of you. All right, it's part of a story that we tell each year. But today, I want you to think about it maybe from a different perspective, maybe from a perspective you haven't thought about it before. I want you to think about how the people in this story today must have felt at that time. All right, so I'll give you a hint. We're going to talk about Mary. We're going to talk about Joseph. All right, and those are two people. I'd really like you to think, what would I do? In this situation, how would I have felt? Because Mary and Joseph in the story are actually quite young. Uh, many, many years ago, when this, um, when these events happen, um, it was the cultural norm that people got married at a much earlier age than than people in our culture get married. All right, so Mary was actually a teenager. Uh, when these events happened. And that means Mary was not much older than some of you or maybe your siblings or some of your older friends. So it's not a far stretch for you, you know, to, to think about uh, this. And that's one of the sometimes surprising things about this story uh, is we tend to think of moms as our moms, but Mary was, was actually uh, a bit younger than that. All right, so that's something, that's a difference in perspective. All right, so there are a few other details in this story that are going to make it special. Uh, so we'll find out what those are. So remember that as I read this, I want you to think about how you would react uh, if you were in this story, if you were part of the story. So we are starting to read from our story of uh, the nativity. And so our story is called Angel's Visit. That's a hint. And it's from the Gospel of Luke, chapter one, right at the beginning verses 26 through 38. All right. So here we have Mary, and, and already we can see by the look on her face, is she, how, how do you think she feels? Scared. A little scared. All right. And that is not, uh, that, is, that is perfectly understandable as we're going to read. So Mary was a young woman. She lived in a town called Nazareth and was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. One day, a tall and handsome man appeared in front of Mary. His clothes were brilliant white, his hair was dark and curly, and his eyes sparkled like lights. Mary knew the man must be an angel. Hello, Mary, he said. God is with you. Mary stepped backward. His deep voice scared her. Don't be afraid, he said. God sent me to tell you that you are going to have a son who you'll name Jesus. He is going to be very important to many people. A son? But I'm not married yet, she said. How is this going to happen? The Holy Spirit will come to you, the angel replied. Your son will be the son of God. The son of God? My son? Mary thought about all these things. It didn't seem possible, but she believed anything was possible for God. I am God's servant. I'll do whatever God says, she said, but her mind was racing. What will Joseph think? Would he believe her? Mary was nervous. When Mary told Joseph about the angel and about giving birth to God's son, he did just what she was afraid he would do. He didn't believe her. He talked about not marrying her anymore. Mary felt so sad, but she remembered what the angel said, and she trusted God. The next day, something wonderful happened. Joseph came to her and said, an angel came to me in a dream. He said, Joseph, don't be afraid to make Mary your wife. 
She is going to have a son, and you're going to name him Jesus. He's going to save people from their sins. Mary smiled a big smile. She was so happy that tears of joy filled her eyes and trickled down her cheeks. She felt Joseph's love again. I'm not scared for you to be my wife, Mary, he said. I will be with you, and we will name the boy Jesus. All right. So that is a happy story in the end, but it had some ups and downs and some unexpected things. So we'll talk about that. Uh, as we talk about these things, if you're watching us on the video and you need to push pause um, to have these conversations at home, please take as long as you like and you can keep uh, going, push play whenever you're ready. All right. So, so let's think about a few things today. So how would you have reacted if one of God's messengers had something to say to you? Scared scared all right but then what do you think you'd get over being scared oh, maybe probably well what's he, almost always the first thing the angel says or the messenger says do not be afraid do not be afraid so that's a common reaction and they're they're expecting that all right and so the angels that's one of the we've talked about this before one of the most most uh common uh reassuring phrases in the bible is do not be afraid because you know, God knows that that it is that it is sometimes a little scary and unexpected, uh, and sometimes when we're not expecting things, you know, it, it can make us afraid. But do not be afraid. All right, the angel said. So, do you think God still sends us messengers? Um. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, in our mind. Uh, and in, you know, in artwork and sort of the popular imagination, we tend to think of uh, these angel messengers as having wings and maybe some feathers. Um, and certainly the angel here was described as all in white, but that might not always be the case. All right. We don't actually know all the time what the angels look like. Um, but at the same time, in the story, Mary and Joseph knew this was a messenger from God. In both cases, the angel appeared directly to Mary and Joseph had a dream, but both of them knew that God was, God was sending them a message. That, that much was clear. All right. So think about what, what do some of the messengers in our lives look like? And remember, God loves variety. They could be parents. That's right. Or priests. Mm -hmm. They could be your parents. They could be your priests or someone else at church um, who's, who's, who's telling you about God. Um, maybe a close friend uh, who's giving you good advice or helpful advice. Right? Mm -hmm. What else could a messenger from God look like? An angel. <laughs> it could look like an actual angel. Very much so. Nothing is impossible with God. That story is, that message is very clear in the story. All right. It could be a person you might see on TV. That's right. It could be a person or even a stranger um, that maybe, you know what? I bet we are sometimes messengers and we don't even realize it to other people. Right. So God is uh, not always predictable, but God is efficient. God gets his, his work done. All right. And so he is going to find the messenger uh, that delivers that message one way or another. And so think about that. Think about the unexpected ways um, God might be sending messages. All right. And, and, and who some of the messengers in your life might be. And some of them might know it and some of them might not. And some of them are just plain mysterious. That happens every now and then. All right. So that's that's something to think about, something fun in this time, because I think as we all uh, spend Advent preparing, I bet we all somewhere in our homes have um, some holiday decorations that portray angels. And so we can think about it. Actually, I just pulled one out this afternoon. I have my German straw angel who's playing a, a horn. It's very fragile, so be careful because it's old. This is as old as I am, at least. All right. So that is an angel. All right. Oh, careful. Mm. <laughs> we'll, we'll just set it over here. So you, know, you can set it here. Just try not to touch it. 
All right, so here's something else to think about. First, we're going to talk about Mary, and then we'll think about Joseph as well, because they were both uh, important parts of the story. Mary must have felt a lot of different emotions during this time. All right. What do you think she felt? Scared. What are some of the emotions? Scared, confused, Scared. surprised. Confused, surprised. Right. And a lot of these are emotions that any expectant mother might feel. Right. But also, I think Mary was probably very curious about happy. what was happening. I think she was happy. I think she was excited. Um, and so all sorts of emotions uh, for her to feel. All right. And and also when um, when an expectant mother waits for a baby to be born, that is anticipation. We talked about that at the beginning of the session. That is anticipation. You are waiting for something to happen. Um, and again, sometimes it's scary. Sometimes it's confusing. But but there's that excitement uh, and that hope that always goes with that anticipation. All right. Hope for something that is yet to come. And that's part of our Advent story. So think about what would you have done if you were Mary in this situation? I don't know. <laughs> it's a hard question to answer. All right. But think about that. Think about all the emotions. But also remember that whatever Mary felt, however scared she was, what did she say to the messenger? Uh, okay. <laughs> she, she said more than okay. She said yes. Right? Whatever God wants, I will do, is what she basically she believed said. believed in God. That's right. She trusted in God. And that's really important. She didn't say come back later. She didn't say, no, try another girl, right? She said, yes, I trust God. And even though I don't know what's going to happen and how this is going to work out, I trust God. And that's a really important message for all of us, all right? To trust in God uh, and to hope in God as well, all right? So think about, think about what it would have been like to be Mary in this story. Now, another Another perspective in this story is Joseph. And we don't know a whole lot about Joseph. There is not a lot of details about Joseph in the Bible, anywhere in the Bible. Um, we know a few things. He was a carpenter, mm -hmm. right? And his name was Joseph. His name was Joseph. We know that much. He was a descendant of King David. Oh, he was? Yes. He was from the line of David, and we'll talk a little bit more about that maybe next week. Uh, if he was from the line of King David, how did he become a carpenter? Well, <laughs> they weren't all, it's not all money and riches, you know. <laughs> I know, but even still. Ah, uh, that's he a good should question. Be like a king. Or well, I think it, it, the, the lineage moved a little differently, and, and certainly it, many oh, wait, generations have gone know. by. All right, but one that's of, a good question. One of his, like his son or something, was corrupt and God destroyed the kingdom. Mm, I think yeah. it was well, something like that. It, yes, things change over many generations, that's for sure. All right, so one of the things we know about him is what we learn in this story, that maybe Joseph was a little cautious at first. All right, he also, in a dream, was told a very surprising story. And he he had been really disappointed when Mary first told him what was going on because he was going to marry her. And, you know, when she got that message from God, he didn't, he didn't know if that would be possible anymore. And so that made him pretty sad and he was very disappointed. But then he has this, this dream and the angel, the messenger comes to him and says, no, 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 it's going to be fine. This is what's going to happen. All right. And again, what does Joseph say? He says he doesn't believe her. That was before the dream. Oh, but no, after the dream. He said, okay, I'll name him Jesus. Again, more than okay, mm. Joseph said yes. All right. So what we also know about Joseph is he might have been cautious. Uh, he might have been initially scared. But we also know that Joseph said yes. And Joseph raised Jesus um, you know, throughout his life and was a caring, um, a caring and loving father. Uh, to Jesus. And so those are some things we also know about Joseph, which makes him, which makes him a pretty, pretty stand up guy, uh, in, in our eyes anyway. So 
you know, we don't know a lot about Joseph, except he got he got presented with this, this surprise, uh, and how he handled it. You know, think about what you would have done if you were Joseph in that situation. You know, how would you have him? How would you have um, interacted with Mary uh, and handled that initial disappointment? Um, would you have believed the angel when you woke up and you'd have this incredible dream? I know I have dreams frequently, and I wake up and I think, well, that was weird. And a lot of times I don't even remember them. All right. But Joseph did. He remembered and he responded. And that's really important. All right. Would you, if you were Joseph, maybe wonder, uh, Mary too, maybe wonder, why me? How did I get picked? Um, well, because she got picked. Yeah, because huh. that's God's will. Right. And we don't always understand that. But but again, Joseph and Mary trusted God. And that's really important uh, because God did choose choose Mary and Joseph for this important job. He didn't choose the the, you know, smartest people, the oldest, the wisest, the richest, the most powerful. None of that was the case. But he chose Mary and Joseph and they responded and they said yes. And so that's those are some important things to remember in this story right as we anticipate so for our activities we're talking a lot about faith at home this season because advent is such a great season for that um, with with its traditions that are so easy and last week we talked about advent wreaths so if you missed that video but you want to check it out absolutely go back and do that and today we are going to talk about advent calendars all right so Advent calendars are a great way to sort of count down the days of anticipation until the end of Advent, which is Christmas. Mm -hmm. All right. And there are so many different types of Advent calendars. When I was growing up, and Matt's not going to be happy because we don't have these now. When I was growing up, we always had a, an Advent calendar that when you opened the window, there was a little piece of chocolate behind it. Can you buy one? Yeah. So, um, some chocolate. that's right. Well, we, we just finished up our Halloween candy, so I didn't think we needed that right now. Um, one year for the boys, we got a little, uh, Lego advent calendar, and so we got a little Christmas tree R2D2, which is super cute. It's not an R2D2, it's just a droid. Oh, well. Anyway, I think it's a type cute. Of droid. I think it's cute. Well, so that came in that, in the Lego advent calendar, if you're feeling you know, like, oh, like that kind of thing this year. Um, right now we, t we use, I've got a couple here that we've had for years and years because I am a sort of traditional person and also a frugal person. And so I reuse these from year to year, but this is one, I think this is Hampton Court. This is a British one. And so there's a number for the day and you open up the window, right? And, and you open up a window every day, and right here's 24, 23 and 24, but we gotta wait on those. And here's another one, this one's German. It shows up, um, you know, one of the German uh, Christmas markets, um, and it's got some neat pictures too. So we hang these up, you can hang it on the fridge, you can hang it, um, you know, anywhere in your house, and you open up one window a day. So that is a great way to mark time. There's also calendars that you can just print off if you don't happen to have bought one. Um, I put two links up on our um, Sunday School webpage, which is stpetersfreehold.org slash Sunday School, all one word. And if you scroll down, you'll see the Advent resources. And there is um, a priest up in New England, I think, please don't break my angel, who does a really neat um, printout calendar that you can color, and it's got uh, a very simple, um, a, a little um, scripture verse for each day that you can read, and, and just a, one little word or image that sort of connects with that scripture. But so this is a really great thing. You can print it off, one for everybody. They can color it. You can leave it on the table, whatever you want to do. There's also from the Episcopal Church, the National Church, there's a Way of Love Advent calendar that you can print off, and both of these are linked on the webpage. And the Way of Love Advent calendar is really great um, because it gives you sort of reflection questions. And so if you if you kept this on the dining room table, maybe uh, at supper time or breakfast time or you know whenever you're sort of gathered, or even I mean if you could do it safely in the car, um, you know, and and just sort of say, all right, conversation time, you know, while you were driving. So for example. Um, today's action is to pray and it says set a timer for three minutes and silently repeat this prayer. Here I am God. 
until the time is up. So little, simple little things all ages can do, um, but that really, really help us uh, sort of slow down and, and really revel in the anticipation and the hope of the season. So advent calendars are great for that. You can also look on Pinterest. They have a ton of ideas. You can make an advent chain, take a link off the chain uh, every time. Um, there are some virtual advent calendars. A really cool one is hashtag advent word. You can look that up online. Uh, a great way if you're active on social media to, to um, interact. It's actually a global calendar. Uh, that's really cool. All right, so there are lots of different ones to focus on. I would recommend that since this is Sunday School uh, and we are uh, disciples of Jesus, that you find one that points us towards Jesus because you will see a lot of Advent calendars that are super fun, um, you know, but, uh, you know, they're, they're, this is a way, this is a, this is a devotion for us. So um, see, if you can, see if you can keep it focused on Jesus. And we've given you lots of, lots of examples to choose from. But Advent calendars are a great way to build anticipation. Uh, uh, you know, as each day one more window gets opened and what's behind that window, uh, that's a really fun thing. So if you're looking for more activities, uh, you can check out the Diocese of New Jersey's webpage uh, under Ministry Resources. And we also have a lot of Advent resources on our parish website, which is stpetersfreehold.org slash Advent, uh, if you are looking for, for more. So thank you for coming to Sunday School today. I'm so glad we get to spend this time together. It is a real blessing for all, for both of us, for me and Matthew both, mm -hmm. and for, uh, uh, you know, whoever can join us, we are pleased. So as you think about the story this week, I hope that you think about Mary and Joseph, who said yes to God, and how you can say yes to. All right. So for our closing prayer, I am going to, uh, I will say it, and you guys can join me for the amen. You ready? All right. God, there are always choices to be made. Sometimes it's hard to know what to choose. Do we say yes or do we say no? Help and guide us to make the best decisions. And when we are asked to do something for you, help us say yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs>